The 2024 severe weather season is already underway across much of the United States with tornadoes reported from coast to coast already from California down to Florida and that's where I'm located. I'm meteorologist Nick Stewart and today we're going to be taking a look at the prospects for tornadoes in springtime 2024 and some of the major driving forces. We're going to be looking at some reanalysis data. I ran some models and I ran some code um, using your EA5 data as well as some NCEP and NCAR data and of course some model data as well and look at the months ahead in terms of that severe weather threat. And in order to do this, we'll be looking at some graphics and all of this, but we will try and make this as easy to understand as possible and we'll go right through all of these pretty graphics to spend so much time working on. So the big players in 2024, the biggest one of course is that transition from El Nino to La Nina. Another big driver will be the Great Lakes ice coverage or the lack thereof for that matter. The Gulf of Mexico, those surface temperatures are running below normal right along the coast, but the deeper you go into the Gulf of Mexico, the warmer it gets. And finally, we'll be taking a look at the central US drought, and again, the lack thereof, we should say. That severe weather season is already underway. Shameless plug, I do storm chasing live right here on the channel. That is a tornado I captured back in uh, about two weekends ago near Jacksonville, Florida. If you're interested in live storm chasing and other live forecasting discussions, we'll be doing those right here on the channel as we go throughout the season. But let's take a look at the tornado season so far. This is valid through February 14th, 13th technically. Florida is leading the charge with 18 confirmed tornadoes so far. This is using preliminary data inside the NOAA Damage Analysis Toolkit. So that's one thing that we'll be looking at, or assessment toolkit, I think is actually what it's called. Kentucky with seven, but one of the big stories so far this year, California on the board, of course, Wisconsin, the first tornado in a month of February on record. Two of them, in fact. So Wisconsin also is one of the big stories so far this year. The big factor guiding the potential for tornadoes is spring and summer. Again, that transition from El Nino to La Nina. Right now, NOAA has a 79% chance of going to neutral phase by April through June. And right now we're sitting at a 55% chance of La Nina by June through August. Since 1950, there have only been nine times we've gone from El Nino to La Nina in a calendar year. That's 1973, 1983, 1988, 1995, 1998, 2005, 2007, 2010, and 2016. And those years... That's what we'll be using for my analysis going forward. Taking a look at those years, here are those Enzo phases going forward. You can kind of see that red line is the mean. We really see that drop towards neutral around May to June, and we're likely going well into La Nina phase for most of these years by October. It's a quick transition, and I think that quick transition will have some impact on the climate across North America. When you look at an NCAR, NSEP analysis of the H500, so the 500 millibar, the geopotential height anomalies, that's a big trough signal across the western portion and the central portion of the U.S. That could mean more active weather and more severe weather changes. You need those big troughs in the western U.S. to inject over the central U.S. to get severe weather. That upper level support, that is a pretty big signal for that, I must say. And when you look at the analysis of the precipitation rate anomalies, this is in millimeters per day, you can see there is a pretty good signal across the central and high plains for above normal precipitation. Higher than normal precip doesn't mean severe weather, but when you give it the time of year of March, April, May, that can tend to likely realize some tornado potential. So now let's look at the past. Let us look at the tornado reports. These are the official tornado initial point data from the Storm Prediction Center. The big things that I'm looking at when I look at that graphic, you can see the central and high plains, big bullseye there of tornado potential, especially we're looking at portions of Western Kansas into Eastern Colorado, the Texas Panhandle. The other big area of interest is also kind of the upper Midwest. We have portions of Minnesota into Northern Illinois, 
northern portions of Indiana to northern Ohio, this area kind of another maximum of potential tornadoes compared to normal. And another thing that I'm kind of looking at here is kind of a lack of tornado, at least a big tornado bullseye across a portions of eastern Texas in through Dixie Alley. That is something that is certainly interesting to look at, but I think when you look at the Gulf of Mexico temperatures, it may not be that uncommon. Now let's take a look at the current drought situation. The far left graphic, that is the current drought as of February 13th, 2024. Not a lot of drought across portions of Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas as well. We do have some ongoing drought issues, especially in Eastern Iowa. However, a lot of the central and southern plains looking pretty good. And when you compare this to some of the analog years that I picked out, again, 2016, 2010, 2007, and 2005, we do see kind of a similar idea with a lack of drought across the central portions of the country that could tend to lead to some more evapotranspiration and keeping those dry lines potentially farther off to the west that would match that tornado data that I was kind of looking at not too long ago. Let's take a look right now uh, going forward. This is using ERA5 analysis. So I ran an analysis based on those select years compared to the current 30 year period of record to so that 1991 to 2020 meme. And these are the anomalies on all of those years kind of averaged together. And what you're kind of looking at there are above normal chances for precipitation across Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Northern Texas, and the Eastern Colorado. Again, higher than normal precip or more active weather doesn't necessarily mean severe weather. However, it is definitely a signal that you would be looking for for higher chances of severe weather. When you look at that data and you compare it to some of the forecast models that we use, we're looking at the CANSIPS in the top right and the CFS in the bottom right. And again, that is my analysis there in the bottom left. What you're looking at there again is above normal precipitation that's in the forecast on the CANSIPS as well as the CFS across the central plains. Central Plains, you got those bullseyes of above normal precipitation. You also, of course, have that El Nino kind of effect here across the southeast, especially Florida. And that's also showing up in my analysis data as well. So just another signal that I'm looking at there for the potential of tornadoes and severe weather. We now have increased tornado potential based on SPC Climo data. And we also have kind of an increase in precipitation based on those years based on ERA5 data. Another thing that I'm very closely looking at, this is more so geared towards the upper Midwest, Midwest and Great Lakes area. And we're looking at the lack of ice across the Great Lakes. In fact, right now we are at a record minimum ice coverage. That's really, really wild. Just how little ice is out there on the Great Lakes right now. These are some of the uh, the last you know years since the 1970s onward through today. Uh, here's a look at what those years look like in terms of the ice coverage. And again, I'm going to circle all my years, my analog years. And what you're looking at is that six of those nine years were also below normal in terms of coverage on the Great Lakes. Two years were near normal, one year was slightly above normal. So again, just another indication that uh, my analog years might be onto something here, given kind of the convergence with this data as well. So what could less ice on the Great Lakes mean for the potential of severe weather? Well, that could mean more active weather and more tornado potential across the Great Lakes and Midwest. What you're looking at there again are the tornado reports normalized, the anomalies compared to the years I'm looking at compared to the normal normalized years. And again, what you're looking at is that higher threat there across southern Minnesota, eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, and to northern uh, portions of Ohio. And I think what that could be a signal of is those warm fronts, especially in early spring, they're maybe able to push farther northeast because the Great Lakes aren't as cold. There's not as much cold air locked up there. And so when you get a developing air full of pressure across the central portions of the country, normally you'd have kind of a stiff east-northeast wind up the Great Lakes. That would kind of help keep those warm fronts farther south because they can be pretty strong. We saw that a lot in eastern Iowa especially. That would be a kind of a problem through like mid-May a lot of years. That warm front just could not push that far north of I-80 because the Great Lakes were kind of helping keep the temperatures down a little bit. That uh, lake-enhanced cool air was keeping that warm front at bay. With less ice, 
that could mean greater penetration of those warm fronts just something that we're looking at and again we're also going to be looking at the gulf of mexico when you look at the gulf of mexico right along the coastline you're looking at temperatures actually a bit cooler than normal that could be some potential signal for maybe less moisture in Dixie Alley. And that was one of those areas that we looked at and the SPC tornado data that I looked at, those normalized numbers, we actually saw kind of some minimums, Eastern Texas through Dixie Alley. That's potentially because of some maybe cooler than normal waters on the near shore Gulf of Mexico. But if you go farther out, those temperatures are very, very warm compared to normal. And therefore, I think when we do get deeper into spring, we could see that effect on the central plains as well. So those are just a few of the many things that could have an impact on the tornado season going forward. I think the indications are there for a more active tornado season, especially across the plains and Great Lakes. But of course, it's all dependent on exactly what happens over the next several months. The biggest driver again that el nino to la nina thank you for watching so much if you're into more forecasting videos and things like this please subscribe for more videos we'll be doing more severe weather discussions especially as severe weather events may evolve across the midwest and central portions of the country i'll be doing some deep dives on those i'll be doing storm chasing as well including live storm chasing we'll be streaming that live here on the channel if you're into that feel free to subscribe as well like this video if you found it entertaining thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you again at the next video.